Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Can We Predict Bone Loss in Astronauts? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, published on February 2, 2022. Research conducted by Lee Gable, Stephen K. Boyd, and others from the Department of Radiology at the University of Calgary Cummings School of Medicine. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Have you ever dreamed of being an astronaut? Exploring outer space sounds exciting, and astronauts get to do that. However, going into space can lead to health problems. The lack of gravity has a negative impact on bones, called bone loss. Astronauts try to compensate for bone loss with a lot of exercise, both in space and on Earth. But even exercising doesn't prevent bone loss in some cases. We wanted to find out what factors affect bone loss. We also wanted to find a way to predict bone loss in astronauts before spaceflight. We analyzed the leg and arm bones of 17 astronauts before and after a space mission. We also looked for markers of bone change in their blood and urine. We found out that bone loss happens quickly in space. The longer the space mission, the bigger the problem. More exercise before spaceflight predicted greater bone loss. Elevated markers of bone metabolism before flight also predicted greater bone loss. Introduction. Every year, astronauts go to the International Space Station to conduct scientific experiments. They have to live and work in microgravity for months. A big problem with this environment is bone loss. Bones are alive. They grow and change all the time to adapt to your body's needs. One type of bone cells breaks down older bone tissue. Other cells build new bone tissue. Usually, there is a balance in this process until a certain age. But in microgravity, the breaking down of bones happens faster than the rebuilding. This is because bones adapt to this new environment where they don't have to carry the body's weight. Much like muscles, if you don't load your bones, they weaken. The problem is that we don't know if astronauts' bones will recover when they come back to Earth, where there is gravity. They may be more likely to fracture their bones later in life. Here you can see a high-resolution cross-section image of a wrist bone. You can see the detailed bone microstructure. The piece of bone is on a blue background, and there is a scale in the upper left to show how big the bone section is. Because of this issue, astronauts spend a lot of their time in space doing exercises. They try to make up for the bone and muscle loss. But how do you exercise without any gravity? There is a special machine on board the International Space Station. It simulates the use of weights, making many exercises possible. But even with its help, astronauts still suffer from bone loss. How much? How does the length of a mission impact bones? Does more exercise help? How can we predict the degree of bone loss? This is what we wanted to find out. Methods. We examined the leg and arm bones of 17 astronauts before and after spaceflight. We used a high-resolution quantitative computed tomography scanner. This allowed us to look at the bones in 3D at a high resolution. We examined the bones' thickness, their strength, the density of their minerals, etc. Here in Figure 1, you can see Canadian Space Agency astronaut David St. Jacques using the scanner. The scanner is on the left side of the image and a helper is aligning his arm to be scanned. We also wanted to understand the role of exercising before and during spaceflight, so we asked the astronauts for their exercise habits. To assess bone metabolism, we collected blood and urine samples before, during, and after spaceflight. We looked for biomarkers of bone growth and bone breakdown, also called resorption. Biomarkers allow us to see changes in bone metabolism before we can see changes in bone density and strength. Results 
The astronaut's bone loss was rapid. Six months in space resulted in bone loss equal to 10 to 20 years on Earth. Longer missions led to even more bone loss. This is especially true for leg bones. Here in figure two, you can see the impact of mission duration on bone density. On the x-axis is the duration of the mission in months, and on the y-axis is the change in bone mineral density. The dashed horizontal line at zero indicates no change in bone density as a reference. Based on the graph, how does mission duration affect astronauts' bones? We found out that exercising more before spaceflight caused greater bone loss, but exercising more during spaceflight protected the astronauts' bones. We analyzed the blood and urine for biomarkers of bone metabolism. The astronauts who had higher levels of these biomarkers before spaceflight lost the most bone strength and density. Discussion. Our results show that we can predict bone loss before spaceflight. Astronauts who exercise more before a flight are more likely to lose bone strength. This is perhaps because they can't keep up the same amount of exercise in space. Astronauts have very busy days. Of course, it doesn't mean astronauts shouldn't exercise at all before going to space. Exercise is vital for their health. But reducing their training in space, along with living in microgravity, is not good for their bones. So every astronaut should have a balanced training plan. Here in Figure 3, you can see David St. Jacques exercising on the International Space Station. He is wearing a tan harness that attaches to the exercise machine to help simulate gravity. The biomarkers of bone metabolism are also a good predictor of bone loss. We don't know why some of the astronauts had higher biomarker levels. It could be because of age, nutrition, medication, or other factors. Yet higher levels of these biomarkers predicted greater bone loss during flight. These astronauts need customized measures to reduce bone loss, such as different exercises, food, or medication. The longer astronauts stay in space, the more bone they lose. This is very important to consider for future longer missions. Astronauts spend six months on the ISS, but longer missions could be more than double this. Imagine what this prolonged time could do to the astronauts' bones. We are also not sure what happens to the bones years after spaceflight. Will bones slowly recover, or is bone loss permanent? These are the questions for our next study. Conclusion Exploring space is exciting, but it's not only for astronauts. You can explore space right here on Earth. Visit an astronomical observatory to watch the night sky through enormous telescopes. You can also watch pictures and videos online from the Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes, which float in space. And even if you never go into space, you can look after your health, including your bone health, here on Earth. If you eat a varied diet with plenty of vegetables, calcium, and vitamin D, and make sure you stay active, you are more likely to have good bone health. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.